Accra is a consortium made up of Oxfam, the Overseas Development Institute ODI, Save the Children International, Care International and World Vision International operating in Ethiopia, Uganda and Mozambique, delivering support to nation states on climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction. Africa Climate Change Resilience Alliance, Accra, Uganda, in partnership with the International Institute for Environment and Development, IIED, has supported the government of Uganda to develop national standard indicators for climate change to influence planning, budgeting and reporting tools in the country from the sub-national to national level using the Tracking Adaptation Measuring Development Framework. In Uganda, we did a research 2009-2011 and uh, one of the findings was that there was low capacity in local governments to mainstream climate change. That was a long time. At that time we didn't have a climate change policy. We didn't have the guidelines for mainstreaming. We didn't have most of the policy documents that are currently in place. So what we did, we piloted one of the districts in Wundubujo to support them to mainstream climate change into their development plans and budgets. And they raised very interesting questions of uh, lack of the policy framework, lack of indicators, and uh, they were not mandated to mainstream climate change. So we worked with them to do the mainstreaming, and when they assessed them, they performed very well. But we also took up uh, the support to national government to develop frameworks for integration of climate change into the planning and budgeting. Finally, we got an entry point where IIED had been doing work on tracking adaptation and measuring development. Um, and we partnered with them and worked with climate change department to, for the country to adopt the same framework that has been tested in eight other countries and they found to be very effective for measuring adaptation and tracking. Accra and IID worked with LTS Africa as consultants who supported the process from training, data collection and consultative workshops. It will only be Uganda that will have undergone and finalized the process that links indicators right from the community level to the national level that will be used to measure climate change. So it is uh, it effective and I think Uganda needs to take the, the, the cake on, the, <laughs> on that one. The Ministry of Water and Environment, Climate Change Department, has been in key coordinating and linking this process with other processes related to the implementation of the Uganda National Climate Change Policy and its implementation strategy. In Uganda, there's high political commitment on part of our leadership of the government in terms of addressing climate change. And this high political commitment by government is already translated into approval of a number of policy, institutional and legal frameworks in the country to coordinate the country's response on climate change. The aspect of developing the tools and uh, indicators or coming out with climate change indicators is key. We have, uh, we have managed to bring on board very many other partners. The Ministry of Environment is on board completely and has owned the partnership. Um, other partners like uh, USID, uh, Feed the Future program, have also come on board. And uh, together, Right now the process is very harmonized and we are moving together um, in a very systematic manner. The Minister of Water and Environment through this department uh, has partnered with Accra, the African Climate Change Resilience in Africa, as well as uh, the USID, uh, Feed the Future Enabling Environment program, as well as other partners who are supporting it, supporting the organizations financially, including IID and other partners, to support government through this ministry as, and working closely with other key ministries, including the Office of the Prime Minister, the National Planning Authority, the Minister of Finance, 
Planning and Economic Development, as well as the Ministry of Local Government, in working out together to develop through a consultative process uh, some key national climate change indicators. Working with APRA, it has really, really been very good for us because we are able now to really engage different stakeholders at the same time by looking at different roles. And another thing, because uh, it has been a consultative process uh, by consulting different uh, stakeholders at different levels, the different districts, uh, you realize that we have worked with different districts that Accra has not worked with. So it was really good that we were able to uh, capture a wider audience in terms of consultations. The Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, which sets standards in relation to indicators for planning, budgeting and final sector and local government reporting through the Output Budgeting Tool, OBT, that this process targeted to influence was part of the process and explained the linkage. Ministry of Finance, as a, an institution uh, responsible for uh, establishing the guidelines of national budgeting, uh, and the uh, monitoring for that matter, uh, budget execution. We we work hand in hand with the Office of the Prime Minister to develop the key performance indicators as well as uh, as well as the indicators uh, output performance indicators to monitor performance. So for that matter, we have been at the front line. Uh, of uh, uh, first of all setting the principles of uh, developing uh, developing indicators which are for which uh, which are used by the sectors to develop their sector performance indicators and then uh, going to the approval process of the office of the prime minister and then on our side integrate them in the output uh, budgeting tool. National Planning Authority, which is in charge of planning in the country and developing the National Development Plan for the country, emphasizes the linkage of this work to the National Development Results Framework. The National Planning Authority is, uh, uh, according to the National Climate Change Policy, it is uh, so supposed to, co co to complement coordination of climate change activities at, at the planning level. So in this particular activity, we, we, we ensured that these indicators which are developed, climate change national indicators, are in line with uh, the national development plan indicators. Yeah, we recently uh, launched, the president recently launched national development plan, the second national development plan for the next five years, 2015, 16 to 2019, 20. And therein, we clearly integrated climate change issues. Uh, we also have a national development plan results framework which has indicators on different areas of the plan. So even there are in there are indicators on climate change. So our role was to ensure that we, in the process of developing these indicators, we don't have indicators which are external to, the, to those ones in the national development plan. So we were there to coordinate and ensure coherence between the national development plan indicators on climate change and uh, the national climate change standard indicators. The Ministry of Local Government is in charge of ensuring that local governments comply with the set indicators for the minimum performance measures and conditions. They also appreciated introduction of climate change indicators in the local government's assessment tool. We talk of uh, providing key indicators both in the OBT and in the assessment tool. We expect local government to comply because they have got something very clear in the, in the budgeting tool and also in the reporting tool to, to report on. And also, uh, it will stop being a project business, it will stop being projectized, but will be a part and parcel of the local government interventions and even can be financed from the local sources of that particular lo 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 local government. Then it's OPM's mandate to ensure that all the institutions that have uh, a role to play in the climate change adaptation and resilience are well coordinated 
there's alignment of policies to the national development objectives and the way they are delivered and to ensure that service delivery actually incorporates climate change adaptation initiatives and strategies. This ministry has been tasked to help other sectors integrate climate change and the National Planning Authority is expected to ensure compliance on integration by all sectors in their respective uh, plans and budgets beginning next financial year, which is 2016. The local governments are key in sub-national to national level, reporting on set indicators. They were part of the process and had this to say. Kotidu started very early with Accra. Accra first came to Kotidu, and from there it started as a training or, or kind of training exercise. Then that is when Kotidu entered into the what the role of making the indicators. We played a role in. Uh, in the initial discussions of coming up with these indicators. Because when several organizations, including ACRA, came to us, and whether or not we need to develop climate change indicators in our plans, in our budgets, and we started, in, we had some group discussions with them, we were guided, they began by playing a fascinating role to us, and other organizations. Then we began coming up with the what could be the indicators we could adopt. Of course, we began from the area of what could be the, main, the challenges that we are having, which are arising from climate change. We never had climate change in the, in the OBT. And then secondly, to measure climate change itself was not there. The local government had no, actually we had practically no way of putting it in the what, as a kind of a report which we could give for what, for the services which we carry for people came up with what can we do and then how can we track and measure what we are doing so that it is helping to handle in mitigation and adaptation of the climate change challenges. The training we got from uh, Accra been pointing certain facts which actually we could have incorporated in our thinking and in our progress of programming. Actually we came out with, uh, it came out to be very important. There have been key critical success factors that catalyzed the process of developing national standard climate change indicators. These included engagement of all key stakeholders, bottom-up approach from national to sub-national level, building knowledge, harmonization of similar processes and actors, linking climate change indicators vis-a-vis -vis development indicators and conducive country policy frameworks which aided in the development of climate change M&E framework. ACRA also partnered with Feed the Future, enabling Environment for Agriculture, a USAID-funded program to co-facilitate the process of integrating indicators into the OBT and local government assessment tool. The partnership was cost-effective, enabled engagement of more stakeholders as well as hiring the technical expertise required to support the work. So we've learned that uh, it's very good to work in partnership for processes to be successful. Because like I said, when we started on this work, one of the success factors was the government was already thinking about indicators. But then there was also a USAID project, Feed the Future, which was also working with Ministry of Finance to review the output budgeting tool to include climate change indicators. The process of developing national climate change indicators was very much appreciated by all actors. However, there are challenges that could affect implementation. Well, there is still a lot of work to be done and uh, a lot of um, assistance will be required, especially to be, to to establish that type of system. In terms of aligning different ministerial mandates to be able to deliver one strategy, whereas we have one national development vision and the NDP2 has incorporated climate change to a great extent in its objectives, you will find that for different institutions have different ways they can deliver on the same climate change objective. We need to carry out what we would call the the much sector-wide approach uh, where each and every sector will have to integrate 
uh, climate change issues and challenges within their work plans. Some districts may not be able to effectively mainstream. We need to train them on how to integrate climate change because you can't report on an indicator when you don't know what actually you're reporting on. So they have to know about climate change, how to integrate it in their plans, and how to measure progress so that when it comes to reporting, we don't have some districts which have gaps because they didn't uh, uh, have, they didn't follow up progress on the implementation of those of those climate change indicators. So I think on issues of reporting, we we might have challenges to do with the capacity in terms of quality and quantity. For the M and E and reporting frameworks to work, the following is recommended by the different stakeholders. In terms of taking forward the indicators, this is a very good process. We are happy about it. But they are, this is not enough. We can have the indicators in the OPT or in the local government assessment tool, but are we able to report on them? That is the big, big question. Because we need baselines now. We have these indicators, but we need baselines. And we know that most of the local governments have not been working on climate change at all, apart from a few who have development partners like USAID who have been supporting them. The issue is that we have 112 districts with new ones added. So next financial year we shall have 135. So USAID is working in 23 districts. Uh, this came up actually during the validation. The local governments were asking, you have taken us through the process of mainstreaming indicators into the assessment tool, but we don't have the capacity. We have not been trained, so how shall we be assessed? And yet there are other local governments who have NGOs and other partners who have built their capacity. That means there's going to be an imbalance where others are performing very well and others don't even know about climate change. So this creates a capacity gap and a need actually for supporting capacities of local governments to be able to do this. We also have to ensure that at the grassroots, some of those indicators are well captured and measured right from national level and to, lo uh, to local levels because not a lot has been done in terms of data connection, ensuring that even Stakeholders are aware of which data to collect for monitoring and, and, and evaluation. I recommend that the capacities of these districts is not only increased in terms of their awareness, but also we should impart a knowledge in them that ensures that they deliver the same skills they've picked up, the same knowledge they've picked up to the lower local governments and even to the people. To take the process forward from where it is now, in terms of presenting and sharing the, the national climate change indicators which have been validated through bigger stakeholder meeting to the, take to the next stage of approval or consultation further. And that will involve the key institutions of government, including the Office of the Prime Minister, again the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, the Minister of Local Government, and of course, ultimately, the, we hope to take this ultimately to the Forum of Permanent Secretaries through our Permanent Secretary, Minister of Water and Environment. And we hope that at some point, the Minister of Responsible for Water and Environment will present this to Cabinet.